Joining me now here on the MMA Report is a man that is going to be a part of UFC 228, the feature prelim on uh, on FX. Uh, it's going to be it's Cody Stamen gets that big matchup, but another big matchup against a, a top ranked guy in Aljamain Sterling. Cody, man, as, as always, I appreciate your time. I know the last time we talked, we we mentioned about how you were you know looking for another big fight. You, you got it, um, but you know obviously you know there's been some social media back and forth. But do you think Aljamain respects your abilities, or or do you think that maybe he's not giving you enough credit? Uh, you know, I don't know. That's, that's, that's a weird thing. So he kind of, like, tried to big brother me in a way. Um, but, you know, I'm uh, I'm ranked uh, uh, ninth or 10th, depending on the day, and he's 8th. So, I mean, it's not like there's a huge variation in where we're ranked. Uh, you know, I just fought and beat a guy that was ranked higher than him. I mean, so like I feel like his uh, his like whole big brother argument, not respecting me, is kind of irrelevant. I mean, I'm here. Uh, you know, the ranking did I didn't get ranked. You know, in the top ten because, you know, I was uh, I could see where if you if I was Sean O'Malley or somebody, and I got thrown in in the top ten and I never fought anyone that was ranked, you know, people would start raising eyebrows. But I'm beating good guys uh, consistently, so, you know. Fuck what Dodge made there. Sterling thinks uh, I'm going to beat him up either way. I, mean, I, I did see there was a very colorful tweet you had at him uh, within the past couple of days uh, in terms of that. But, you know, it, it just, you know, obviously, I mean, you mentioned about it. you're coming off that win against Brian Caraway. Of course, Brian, uh, you know, a lot of people think of his wrestling abilities. But how is this fight different, you know, from, you know, what you went through for Caraway in terms of Sterling? Well, I feel like, uh, I mean, as I think overall MMA fighters, I think they're kind of pretty much on a similar level. Um, I think Sterling's a little more diverse on his feet. He throws a little bit, throws a little bit more, um, on it, more diversity on his feet. Um, they both have about the same amount of knockout power, which is zero. <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, I mean, I, I look at it like it's, it, it's the same, it's a different, it's a different opponent. You know, I need to prepare differently. Um, but it's the same kind of fight as, as Brian Carraway. It's that, it's that level. You know, I know, I know what that level is. You know, I watched them fight. They, it was, a, there was a close fight, you know, Brian ended up winning that fight, but, um, you know, I know that level of, of MMA and, you know, I know that, you know, I can, I can beat that guy on a bad day. His last two years, it's been up and down for him. You know, he's got three wins, but also has three losses. As you have prepared for this matchup, I mean, what do you see as his has been the issues for him in terms of why he's had this up and down streak? So, I mean, I look at the two split decision losses. I think anytime you're in a split decision, uh, you're in a fight like that. I mean, there's two things that happen. Like, you go into the third round. You know what I mean? Obviously, if it's a split decision, you know, you guys went one and one, and that third round is going to decide who wins, you know? And someone that really has a will to win pushes on the gas pedal and does whatever it takes. They'll die in there, you know what I mean? Like, I know that about myself, that if we're one and one in the third round, like, you, you're going to have to kill me, right, to beat me. I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna empty the tank. I know that. Um, and that's just, you know, part of, uh, you know, being a, being a, uh, a competitor, you know? And I look at, I watch Australian in those fights, and I kind of watch him fade in those third rounds. And that's, you know, that's where I think him and I differ. You know, if I'm in a tough spot and, uh, you know, my the chips are down, I'm going to do absolutely everything I absolutely have to do to win to where I feel like he cracks a little bit. He doesn't want to get in that dog fight that you kind of have to get into sometimes, you know, when the, when the chips are down. So, um, you know, for me, it's... Uh, I'm on my way up, you know, I haven't peaked yet. Uh, you know, I've only really been training full time. That's my only objective in life is to be a good fighter for, you know, a little over a year. So I think I still have a lot of an upside and you'll see that, you know, on this next fight and my continuing next fights. Uh, but you know, Sterling, he's been around, he's been around forever. He's kind of been in the same place for, for two years. Like you said, he's three and three, he's had big fights. Um, he hasn't been able to win those big fights, um, and he's got another big fight ahead of him. And uh, let's let history repeat itself, and I'll beat him up again. Now, if we're talking about a scale of zero to ten, and ten is the peak, where are you at right now? You know, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I look at, 
it's not it's not so much about like learning new techniques or it's about honing the techniques that I already have and then being able to apply them at the right time. Um, and I look at uh, you know my last couple fights and I'm always really crit- critical about my performances and you know I really haven't been I haven't had that fight in the UFC where I was like cool man. If anything, I think, I think my, the fight I'm pr- most proud of is the Terry and Ware fight because I was injured and. I had a, you know, a week to prepare for the fight, you know what I mean? I literally had no training for that fight, but I, I came out and did what I had to do, and I fought really, really smart. Um, I kind of baited him into fighting a fight that I wanted to fight, and I feel like that was, you know, in my opinion, my most impressive performance in the octagon. So in my last two fights, you know, there were a lot of opportunities, a lot of things that I've been training that I didn't apply to the actual fight, you know, and that's a mental thing, and that's just a maturity thing as an athlete. You know, I think that, you know, what, I, what I've shown – uh, in the octagon compared to what I know that I'm capable of, I feel like I'm really at 6%. I feel like I'm a D minus, you know what I mean? And I know that I can be an A. I just got to keep, I got to keep studying. I got to keep working and keep improving. For you, is this game just more mental than anything else uh, of taking what you're working in the training room on a day in day out basis and, and making sure that shows up on fight night? Yeah. I mean, I think that, you know, fighting is 100%, you know, uh, it's in your own head. You know, you obviously you train your body to do the right things, to do the things you need to do to win. Um, but it's the application that, that, that really matters. And it's like having that strong, that strong mental game, um, and having that strong mental game plan. You know, you see some guys, some guys just have it. Some guys, you know, you put them in a cage and they're just killers. You know what I mean? They, they, they go out there and commit suicide. It's like a street fight every single time. Um, and you see those guys, uh, that you know maybe have all, all the skills in the world, and one day they show up and they look really good and they look really sharp. And the next day, next time you see him fight, you're like, "Dude, what happened to this guy? It just you know kind of fell off." Um, so I think you know the biggest fight for me and for every athlete, every guy that gets in the octagon is, is the fight between your ears. You know what I mean? You got to convince yourself and you got to train your mind, your body um, to be perfect. And that, you know that's I think that's what we strive for as martial artists is to be, is to be perfect. Um, and it, I'm telling you, it is a, it is, it's a never ending process. You know what I mean? You can throw, you can throw the same technique a million times and still, you know, get better at it. And that's one of the things about MMA that's so interesting. Perfectionist. It's, it's something I, I try to strive to every day in, in my business for you. I have to imagine that's a trait that it's, you're always trying to conquer that. I mean, but do you kind of f- sometimes feel like maybe you you think about that too much and maybe little things might, might slip? Uh, no, I mean, I'm, I'm amazed at a game of, a game of inches, right? I mean, uh, it's, it's the, it's the, the daily progression, you know, you're obviously, you're not doing the same move every single day. Um, you're constantly trying to evolve, but you're also constantly trying to sharpen that sword. You know, you, you can't always pick up a new weapon. I think you're going to be like really good at it, you know? Yeah, you kind of have to hone the skills that you have, and you know that's that's a that's a constant process. You know, if you're if you're cutting wood all day, uh, you know you have to constantly sharpen sharpen your tools. So, I mean, for me, it's just a, it's a sharpening thing, and uh, I feel like I'm going to be the sharpest I've ever been this fight. Obviously, a win puts you, I would think, in probably a, a top five ish type fight and of course we just had the bantamweight title D- does it bother you to to kind of hear that that you know the 125 pound champion wants to fight the 135 and does that bother you that a guy that hasn't fought in your division potentially could be stepping in to get a title fight uh no i mean because i think it, it's, it's just it brings attention to the weight class you know i think um i don't think henry pseudo can beat tj dillashaw so i think it it you know, while it does put the belt on hold, you know, for me personally, I'm not really that worried about it because, uh, let's be honest, I'm uh, I'm a fight, I'm two fights away from a title fight anyway. So they can sort it out. You know, TJ can fight whoever. Um, and then when it comes to my time, when I'm peaking and I'm ready to be in that position, um, you know, they'll have all that sorted out and I'll be ready to uh, snatch what's mine. I mean, it seems like we got a little bit of a log jam right now at 135. I mean, there's yeah. there's really, well, I, I think, not a clear number one contender. I mean, you can make the case for a Sun Sal, Marais, even Dominic Cruz. I mean, I mean, do you kind of look at yourself and say, okay, I win here. You know, maybe, I, maybe potentially cars play right and I can find myself into one of those fights? Yeah, yeah. I mean, a win here and a fight against one of those guys you just mentioned, I feel like, and then I can make that argument like, hey, I'm the next guy. So, 
Um, and you're right, log jam is a good way to put it. At 135, there's a lot of guys at the top that could literally be the next guy that deserves the shot. And, I mean, I wouldn't argue with you if any of those guys got that shot. Um, as long as it's one of those guys, not some random person, you know, farther up, yeah. unless it's me. But, uh, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a crazy weight class. I don't know many. I can't think of one other weight class where it's like, okay, yeah, there's three guys that could be the champ right now or three guys that could be the next guy to get the get the belt. I mean, the only other weight class I can think where there's guys, like, stacked up at the top like that is 155. And that's another, you know, crazy stacked weight class. Yeah, I mean, there's some weight classes where it's not quite sure. Just because yeah, I mean, like, look, yeah. look, this look guy's at two hundred champ for ten years, right? Well, look at two hundred five. Yeah. I mean, it, that's a, a division where you're like, okay, well, you know, who does Cormier fight next if he defends his title? Mm-hmm. Where's the John Jones situation play in? But yeah, right. there's, a, that's a great thing for you. But uh, you got this fight here. Uh, this year, was this your first time going to Texas? Uh, no, I want to say I was in uh, Houston for one of Darren's fights. I think okay. it turned out well, so I think I've had pretty good luck in Texas. Okay, I'm excited to go back. It's a cool place. Yeah, I've, I've gone to Dallas a couple of times. We've always had a good time there. Go there later on this year, so I'm looking forward to it. So, But, yeah. Cody, man, as always, I appreciate the time. Of course, let everyone know uh, where they can follow you on social media, and if you got any sponsors that you want to mention, the uh, floor is yours. Uh, yeah, everything. I'm just uh, Cody Stamen. Um, check me out on Instagram. That's usually where uh, I do most of my social media. Uh, it's the only one I really like. I, I, Every now and then I'll get on Twitter and you know talk shit tells me it's thrilling, but outside of that, I'm not much of a tweeter. Uh, yeah, thanks for having the interview, and uh, yeah, I look forward to putting a show on for everybody.